Well, this week on Motor Talk, I'm absolutely thrilled and honoured to be joined by none other than Sir Jack Brabham. Sir Jack, thank you for joining me on the show today. That's OK, Rebel. I've always been interested in what drives and what motivates great champions. Looking back on your career now, what drives or what drove Jack Brabham? Um, well, it depends on what uh, we really mean by that, because... Um yeah, you know, I started off racing. I had no idea, didn't even know what a world championship was. So that wasn't the idea when I started. And um, but I just liked driving, and uh, the competition really uh, uh, I appreciated it really, and really liked doing it. And it was a you know it was a challenge really. And then of course the challenge when I went to England expanded, and uh, as I moved on of course. Uh, eventually um, got my sights on the World Championship. That took quite a number of years to get that far. Mm-hmm. And now, from what I've read with your racing history, it was it was more the mechanical side of things that, and the engineering side that originally attracted you, I suppose. Yeah, well, actually, um, you know, I started off as a mechanic and then the engineering side before I drove any of the racing cars. Uh, so that was obviously um, a thing in the back of my mind that um, uh, the racing will give me the opportunity to do a lot of mechanical work and uh, engineering, mm-hmm. and it did too. And I also read that it was almost a, a coincidental trip to Brisbane to get some engineering parts and, and then a subsequent visit to the Speedway <laughs> yeah. that started it all? Yeah, that's right, actually. Um, you know, I... I, I used to live on motorcycles uh, in the early days, and uh, not that I actually raced them, but um, uh, motorcycles was my big thing. But then, of course, I um, I actually wanted to go on one race, and that was at Bathurst. And uh, I'd actually uh, acquired a um, Norton, uh, uh, Manx Norton. And uh, I thought, well, I'll go and enter it up at Bathurst. And uh, any- anyway, before the race came round, I got called up for the Air Force and had to go into the Air Force, so I missed it, mm. which is probably a good thing. <laughs> 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 and uh, then, of course, after I come out of the Air Force, um, uh, it was uh, just an associate, as you said, um, got me up to Brisbane. And uh, we got up there on a Monday, actually. And um, the, uh, the friend I was with, who used to race in America, and um, he was trying to tell me all about motor racing. And um, we saw in the paper where the Saturday night meeting had been cancelled because of rain, and they uh, had it on the Monday night. It's a perfect timing. So... <laughs> so it was like that, you know, uh, off I went to uh, have a look at this meeting and I guess, um, I actually thought they were mad actually on the <laughs> speedway we to start with. <laughs> but I could see the challenge in it and um, uh, I decided uh, I'd like to build a car for that. So I did. I built a racing car with the idea of Johnny driving it and me just looking after it. But it wasn't long before his wife decided that uh, she didn't want Johnny racing anymore. So <laughs> um, I was left with the car in the workshop and no driver. So I thought, oh, no, I'll have a go at this myself. So Something had to happen. <laughs> yeah, so I did. <laughs> and won uh, third race. Yeah, won the third race I was in, yeah. And, um, yeah, I, I took the speedway very well, actually. Um, I've done very well at it, really. Mm. And, of course, the, uh, finished up making a car and even made my own engine eventually. Um, and that engineering background was really good for me later years when I moved on. And, of course, um, um, I had seven years on the speedway, actually. Mm. And then uh, I started on the road racing and um, acquired a Cooper Bristol car, which had uh, uh, done me well. <laughs> and um, 
and eventually 1955 I went off to England and uh, started racing over there. I went over there for a year's experience, really. Mm. It took me 30 years <laughs> to come back. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jack, I want to ask you about, uh, again, about um, the Speedway aspect, because as you said, you touched on there, it taught you a lot engineering-wise, but the driving style for the midgets... Again, did that that obviously laid a very strong groundwork and a foundation for what ultimately took you into Formula One. Well, actually, um, the the actual driving side of the speedway was very very good experience, really, because it was something that really sharpened your reflexes. You know, you're um, you know, sliding and out of control, you're like all the time, <laughs> and um, it, uh, it, it was really good grounding, and I think it really helped. But when later years when I went to England and was racing on wet tracks. Mm. And it was very, very slippery. And it was really not much different to run on senders. Mm-hmm. So um, I think that really sharpened my reactions up, really. And uh, that was a good grounding. And then, as you said, you were very successful in Speedway, then went into hill climbs and the Red X Special. Yeah. A beautiful car, beautiful-looking car. Yeah. I'm sure it was a challenge to drive, but I... I saw two interesting things I wanted to ask you about that. One was, one was there was an interesting story about the sponsorship with that, and probably your first run in with with cams, I suppose, in terms of having the the, the signage on the side of the car. Yeah, yeah. And you had an interesting way around that. What was that? Well, uh, actually, um, cams only really just started at that time, and uh, starting to wave their big whip, if you like. To straighten the the um, um, straighten out matter racing. Anyway, um, uh, I went to a race meeting at uh, Orange and um, had the Red X special there. And uh, the managing director of Red X came to see me. I had the whole family there, I mean, and I'd been racing this car for six months or more with Red X on it, nobody had said anything. But suddenly cams appeared on the scene and said, um, you can't drive that motor car with Red X on it. Mm. I, well, this is a lovely situation here. I am <laughs> you know, with the managing director of Red X here and all the rest of it. Not good. And uh, No, and um, well, I couldn't believe what I was hearing because, you know, the camera just stopped you just like that. Mm. It didn't make sense to me.